What's up, everyone? It is Tuesday. It is August the 8th, and I got a lot to say. But when we go on here, on these are the breaks. And these are the breaks. These are the breaks. You know what it is. These, these are the breaks, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome live here from Infanity Studios on this beautiful Tuesday afternoon. And believe it or not, guys, there is a tragedy that happened over the last few days here in Los Angeles. It's been one of the worst times. You know why? Take a guess. The Lakers signed Anthony Davis for three more additional years at a record-breaking $62 million a year. Boom. Can you effing believe that? I mean, you give a guy a record-breaking deal that's going to be making about $62 million a year, and he only gives you half of, of his production, only half of the time that he's actually here. Because if we recall, I mean, Anthony Davis has been here for entering his fourth season with the Lakers right now. I can guarantee you he's only played about 50% of the games given. And I, I get it. Injuries happen. I get it. His tissue's a little soft right there. And it's not his fault. It's just the way his his body was built, the way he was grown into it. Because before when he before he got to Los Angeles, he never really got hurt. He was one of the healthiest players that we've ever seen. He's He was always out on the court, giving it his all, until he decided to kind of take, take a seat back and, you know, complain about wanting to be out of New Orleans, and now he got his wish. He's in Los Angeles, and the first year was great, good. He got a championship. But what happened after that? I mean, injury after injury, and, I mean, Rob, this is a message to you right now. I'm not even going to waste too much time on Anthony Davis because I'm going to be talking about him for the next five years. But I'm just letting you know, like, if, if you really know how to spend some money, this deal reminds me of, like, in 2016 when the Lakers were so desperate, Kobe Bryant uh, retired, and they were like, okay, how are we going to replace Kobe Bryant? And they went on to sign Luel, uh, Luel, uh, Lou Benga. Duel, I can't even pronounce his name. That's how bad of a player he is. Uh, but dang, I remember uh, Luel Dang uh, from the Chicago Bulls at the time. They would give them a uh, crazy deal. And then let's all talk about um, Timothy Moskov. Timothy Moskov was coming off a championship uh, with 2016, the Cleveland Cavaliers. But you give two guys four years, 80-some million dollars. And, I mean, that is the reason why Mr. Uh, Mitch Kupchak and Jim Buzz are no longer in the picture for doing dumb deals just like that. And it ruined the, the, it ruined the Lakers for a while. For a while, because you had to go through the stretches of having Jordan Clarkson, Brandon Ingram. And right now, we're looking at possibly, I'm, I'm saying this, I'm saying it right now. This is going to be LeBron James's last season. We we saw what LeBron went through this past season. We we noticed that okay, it, whether is he going to retire? Is he not going to retire? It took until he took the stage at the ES, uh, ESPN SB Awards just about a few weeks ago here in Los Angeles, and he said, "I'm back," and that means he's back for one more season. And right now, we understand that you know the situation that happened with his family, his son. You know, thankfully he is doing okay. He's great. Uh, he's looking like he's back out in the in the real world, and he's doing all the all the things he normally did. And hopefully, um, Brownie James gets back into it. And hopefully, hopefully, he continues his terrific play. And we don't know if we're going to see him in the NBA next season. We don't know if he's going to play again this season with USC. That is still up in the air for us to speculate and talk about. But LeBron James last season, are we really going to deal with Anthony Davis Um for the next, what, 2028? 20, That's the next five seasons right there. I, I honestly don't think, and I saw, uh, I don't know, was it Rich Paul? I think it was Rob Palenka who came out and said it uh, earlier today. They were like, well, this is the reason why we want a guy like this. He's all about winning. Really, he's all about winning. He's all about not playing when given the opportunity at times because there was a lot of moments. There were a lot of moments last season, especially the year before when they didn't make it to the playoffs and they lost uh, – I mean, it was just an ugly stretch when they lost that game in New Orleans last season. Not this past season, but 2022. When they lost that game in 2022, when they got out of the playoff picture, it was why. Because Anthony Davis was somewhat hurt, capable of playing, but did not play three games in a row at the end of 
last season, not this past one that just ended. But I don't know. I mean, you look at 186 million. I mean, 62 million a year for Anthony Davis, the highest paid player in the freaking NBA. It's freaking ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I'm actually going to move on to something much better. We're talking about Team USA. Team USA has actually kicked it off last night in Las Vegas. They had a tremendous uh, beatdown on Puerto Rico. And we understand Puerto Rico might have some good players, but you're talking about Brandon Ingram, a former Laker who is now in part of Team USA. You look at Anthony Edwards, a rookie of the year. You also have Jalen Brunson, which is low-key my favorite player in the NBA. Jalen Brunson has been trouble in the Eastern Conference for the New York Knicks. He's been terrific. And Michael Bridges, also Michael Bridges, who is now a member of the Brooklyn Nets. And we got a chance to catch Michael Bridges at the Sparks game this past week. He was actually there spending his last few days off before the Team USA gets going. And then here comes the regular season. But you look at Jaron Jackson, the defensive player of the year, who was also at the Sparks game. It seems like all these players were kind of making their last trips before they went out to the road and they came out to the Sparks game and, you know, they did not give the Sparks any luck that day because they did lose the game. But you also look at another guy like Austin Reeves. We know that Austin Reeves signed that humongous deal staying in Los Angeles. But believe it or not, Steve Kerr, uh, one of the assistant coaches uh, for Team USA, has been openly talking highly of Austin Reeves about his his uh, energy out on the court and how smart of a player he is. I mean, what, what, what do you think? You think he's not going to learn anything from playing with LeBron James? He's definitely going to learn a lot, especially learning a lot. Austin Reeves has given a lot of credit to Rajon Rondo, uh, especially, you know, learning from a great mind like, you know, Rajon Rondo. He's an amazing um, NBA champion, of course, former Boston Celtic and Laker. Um, but Team USA uh, is going to be looking good. Um, I really don't know what's going to happen because don't, we're only one game in. We still got a lot more to go. But we're going to take a quick little commercial break. When I return, we had two incredible, maybe three or four, uh, if we want to include the WNBA, but I don't want to talk about these women going crazy out on the courts and fighting each other. But I do want to talk about two interesting fights that happened on Saturday night. When we return here on These Are The Breaks. What's up, y'all? This is Lexi Brown with the LA Sparks, and you're watching Infanity TV. A podcast for the fans, by the fans. Dive deep into the topics the other shows miss, raw and uncensored. And he's going to play team ball. His legacy is at stake. Rare, hard-hitting interviews with players, coaches, and you, the super fans. I'm not hating. I'm like, okay, cool. Good. Three championships in five years. He's more than good, bro. Profanity Nation. Listen live or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Powered by Jesse Brown of Keller Williams. United One Protection Services. With over 30 years of experience, United One Protection Services has more expertise and knowledge than the other security companies combined. Residential, commercial, municipal, or institutional, United One Protection Services does more than just security. We protect your livelihood. United One Protection Services. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, these are the breaks. And believe it or not, guys, believe it or not, it was an interesting Saturday night. Um, as I was, I was just waiting for the Jake Paul Nate Diaz fight because that was one of the most um, anticipated boxing fights that you can ever imagine. Because you look at a guy like Nate Diaz, who was a superstar in um, MMA, and then now you look at Jake Paul, one of the biggest superstars in YouTube years ago, now a boxer for the last two seasons, and. 
you know, it seems like Jake Paul has kind of found his love to do something, of course. He's an as idiot. It. Yeah, I mean, he might be. He he might be, but believe it or not, guys, he's actually pretty good. He's pretty quick. Of course, he got a lot of learning to do. But this fight that was going to be taking place, of course, Saturday night, everyone's getting ready. Uh, but it took until there was two guys up in Cleveland in Major League Baseball. We're talking about Mr. Jose Ramirez. I'm a fan of Jose Ramirez. Jose Ramirez is a great, uh, he's a third baseman for the Cleveland Guardians. A great guy, great guy. But when you look at Tim Anderson, some of you guys might be like, hey, you know what? I, I, I heard Tim Anderson's name trending a, a few days ago. What happened with that man? Well, let me tell you a little bit about what happened, a little background story of why maybe uh, this was well-deserving. A few days ago, or almost a week or so, um, he was, I guess, publicly, publicly, uh, his wife put his name out there and accused him of cheating. He was caught cheating. Of course, you know, if your wife catches you out there like that, you're busted. Uh, You had no room out. So there was a little bit of drama in you know in tim anderson's life over the last few days so i'm guessing tim anderson you're on the road you're in cleveland your wife is probably texting you back and forth some crazy stuff and you're maybe frustrated you're playing defense and this is a situation that happened all right so uh jose ramirez he's batting tim anderson second baseman for the white Sox. He's guarding, he's uh, he's at second base. Jose Ramirez hits a double down the line. Uh, the right fielder gets the ball, throws it to second base. Here comes Jose Ramirez. He's running down. Speedy Gonzalez out there. He's running, and he slides, and he's safe. He's safe. The moment he's safe, he looks up, and he sees Tim Anderson standing right above him. And he's kind of like pushing some out of the way, like, hey, get out of my way. Let me stand up. I'm safe. Let me get up. And... I don't know what happened. Some words must have been said around that time. But the moment Jose Ramirez, uh, the guy who hit the double, he gets up and him and Tim Anderson kind of get into it a little bit. The first thing Tim Anderson did as the defensive player on the field, he took his glove off, threw it on the floor, and he put him up. That's exactly what Tim Anderson, he wasted no time. He wasted no time to even talk about it, get separated by teammates. He just dropped the glove and he put him up. Hey, Jose Ramirez was like, okay, okay, you want to put him up? Let's put him up. And they both uh, face each other off, and the umpire, this is the funniest part of it all, the umpire just looked at both of them and took like three steps back, and he let them go at it. Jose took a swing. Tim Anderson took a swing. Then someone was holding Jose Ramirez back. He's being held back like this, and Jose Ramirez just hits a no-look swing. He's like, boom. And knocks the crap out of Tim Anderson down. It was a no-look punch. Exciting moment. I mean, I got to give it credit to, I believe it was a broadcaster from the White Sox um, team. Um, He actually called it great. He was calling uh, the play-by-play like it was an actual boxing fight. And the funniest part of it all, he goes at the end, he's like, down goes Anderson. Down goes Anderson. It was so hilarious, man. If you guys are trying to watch that, go on Twitter, YouTube, check it out. Because Tim Anderson, you really took a beating. Next time, I mean, it's baseball. You never really see stuff like this in Major League Baseball. I mean, you see you see it between a batter and a pitcher at times. But you never see it during an actual plays after someone hitting a double and not. But, I mean, Jose Ramirez, the next day, he had his boxing gloves. He's out there ready. He's like, who wants it next? That was was the funniest post maybe of the year <laughs> it was so funny that it made me retweet it um but jose ramirez man you got him with the no look punch and tim anderson man next time don't cheat because you never know a few days later you might get punched right in the face and get dropped down on national television right before the most interesting fight as we talk about nate diaz we talk about jake paul of course you know jake paul is one of the biggest youtube stars but it was just an interesting fight to see someone like Paul that, I mean, people would look at a person like that and they're like, well, he's not a real fighter. He's not a boxer. He's not this. He's not that. He's just a YouTuber. I mean, him and his brother came up on YouTube. As we talk about his brother, Logan Paul, he was actually fighting for WWE SummerSlam at the same night on Saturday night up in Detroit. Logan Paul wasted no time. Flew from Detroit, jumped on the jet after his fight at SummerSlam, flew to Dallas where Jake Paul was fighting. They both met down there, and it just came down to the wire at the end. It was a, a good fight. Nate Diaz, I'm surprised he didn't get knocked out in the first in the first round because if some of you guys that were watching the fight, that first round, he almost had him. Almost had a whooping on him. But, hey, Nate Diaz, 
he he had heart. He shot. He he showed a lot of heart. He was really fighting out there, trying to maintain his his composure because he was just kind of like he was playing more towards the audience than you know trying to fight an actual fight. And it was kind of funny. Uh, but Jake Paul did not let him have it. Surprisingly, Jake Paul came up with the unanimous uh, decision, and you know he did win the fight. Uh, who is he going to face next? I mean, he called out Canelo. He called out Canelo Alvarez to come and fight him next. I mean, that Ooh. fight right there, if by any chance anybody out there, all those promoters, all those TV networks that want to get a fight of the century, I mean, Jake Paul got the fans. He got the number fans out there, and, you know, we all know that Canelo brings excitement. He brings his fans every time um, he gets out on the ring. So, I mean, that might be a fight you want to watch and if you're interested in money all the promoters out there get involved in that fight but we're gonna take a quick little commercial break when we return here on these are the breaks i'm gonna talk a little bit about wnba and i'm gonna talk a little bit more about the nba because i'm not gonna i'm uh, there's a couple things i want to get off my chest all right when we return here on infanity tv what's up y'all two girls chanel gwimike and you're watching infanity television boom A podcast for the fans, by the fans. Dive deep into the topics the other shows miss, raw and uncensored. And he's going to play team ball. His legacy is at stake. Rare, hard-hitting interviews with players, coaches, and you, the super fans. I'm not hating. I'm like, okay, cool. Good. Three championships in five years. He's more than good, bro. Profanity Nation. Listen live or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Powered by Jesse Brown of Keller Williams. United One Protection Services. With over 30 years of experience, United One Protection Services has more expertise and knowledge than the other security companies combined. Residential, commercial, municipal, or institutional, United One Protection Services does more than just security. We protect your livelihood. United One Protection Services. Yeah, buddy, these are the breaks. And make sure everyone stay tuned here tonight. All right, tonight at, uh, at uh, 8.30 p.m., we got the Profanity Nation who is going to be taking the spotlight here on Infanity TV and as well. Make sure you follow us here at Ad Lake Sparks Weekly on Instagram. Here it is, man. Uh, check it out. These amazing stickers right here. If you find one of these on your vehicle, if you go to the Sparks game, you find these on your vehicle, you know it was us. Um, but again, man, uh, make sure you follow all of the latest content on the Ad Lake Sparks and the WNBA season, which I am going to touch on the WNBA. But I first want to touch a little bit on some baseball because, you know, um, <laughs> it, it, it's so funny to see that you know people got to understand that the way you start this season or the way your season is going in the middle of the year is not the way you're going to end the year and that goes a lot to the los angeles angels of disneyland when you look at the stars that they have of course mike trout has been out of the picture for the last like two months or so and the angels are banking everything on shohei otani who is going to be an unrestricted free agent this upcoming winter he is allowed to go anywhere he wants to 
But one of its main concerns has been like, okay, well, if the Angels are going to compete and are they, are they going to contend for World Series, they, he is going to stay in Anaheim and play with the Angels long term. Once a term. sucker, but, always a sucker. I mean, yeah, I mean, that, that can be it. I mean, Artie Moreno, the owner of the Los Angeles Angels, has technically shown that he's trying to win. I mean, you can always try. I mean... I can try to be a billionaire. It doesn't mean I'm going to become a billionaire. I mean, I hope I do, but I'm going to try. And Artie Moreno has been trying a lot of things over the last, like, 15 years, and it has not been good for the Angels. Right now, the Angels were on a hot streak a few weeks ago. They were hot, hotter than the tamale you're going to eat. But it was so interesting to see that everyone, the media even itself, was buying in. They were like, oh, my God, the Angels are actually going to make the playoffs. <laughs> I mean, and sooner than later, the meltdown was coming. Right now, they are riding on the seven-game losing streak for the Anaheim Angels right now. Seven-game losing streak. They have now fallen to ten and a half games behind the last spot in the wild card. So, what does that mean? That they are not going to make the playoffs. Very interesting. I, I'm, I'm just now excited to see that, okay, if the Angels are not going to make the playoffs, then does that mean that Shohei is going to walk away, maybe go down the go down the five freeway and go to Dodger Stadium or go all the way up north of five and go to San Francisco, which those are the two teams in the West Coast who are being speculated out there that, you know, Shohei might have some interest. Um, but that's very interesting to see that the Angels are collapsing right now in early August, so very interesting and very funny. Not like the other team in Los Angeles, which is the real team, the Dodgers, are on a hot streak right now. And I want to give some credit to Dodgers, right fielder, center fielder, second baseman, whatever you want to call it, Mookie Betts. Mookie has been on a tear right now. I mean, he has 31 home runs as a leadoff hitter. There is no other player no other player right now. I mean, take your time. Look, look at your stat book. Try to flip it over. See what other player has the most home runs as a leadoff hitter in Major League Baseball. It is Mookie Betts. Thankfully, Mookie Betts still has about seven more years left on his contract. Um, but he is on fire right now. He's batting almost over three, over 300 right now. 31 home runs, 77 RBIs. He is just um, on another level right now. And let's not forget about Freddie Freeman. I mean, when I every time I drive by Dodger Stadium, which I live nearby Dodger Stadium, there's a lot of billboards out there when you're driving down Sunset, and there's a big billboard that says Freddie Freeman, thank you, uh, thank you for your love and your your support of the LA community. I mean, Freddie Freeman has been a staple to this community over the last say year and a half because everything he does on days off, he's always out there. Elementary schools, uh, for every type of facility at hospitals, children's hospitals, he's always going around and doing the right things for the community. So, I mean, even though they're doing all the right things on the court, they're doing all the right things off the court. So that shows a lot, a lot of excitement to see what Freddie, Mookie, and J.D. Martinez, these type of players are bringing to the table. But uh, one thing I do want to talk about the Dodgers, uh, this Friday night is going to be a big night at Dodger Stadium. Of course, the Dodgers are scheduled to uh, retire number 34, which was worn by the great Hall of Fame pitcher uh, for the Los Angeles Dodgers in the 80s, Fernando Valenzuela. And one thing I can tell you about Fernando, um, I can tell you one story. I got a chance to meet Fernando in 2005. I was, um, I don't know, I was maybe about 13, 14 years old. And I got a chance to meet him, shake his hand. I thought I was meeting like one of the kings uh, because, you know, for the people that know, you know, he was, he was amazing out there. I mean, they call him, uh, anyone that knows his nickname, he was El Toro. El Toro is... Uh, it's an animal, one of those, uh, I really don't know uh, what kind of animal or sheep or what, what kind of bull it is, but um, it's somewhat of a bull. But he is so um, terrific out there. The way he just pitched, the way he took charge, and the way he handled pitching off three-day rest. Nowadays, people complain about a five-day rest, six-day rest. Um, he was doing it off a three-day rest multiple times. Cy Young Award winner, two-time World Series champion with the Dodgers. And, you know, when you beat the Yankees in the World Series, I mean, I Hats off to you, sir. Congratulations. And number 34 will be retired. And Saturday night will also be bobblehead night for Fernando Valenzuela at Dodger Stadium. But I do want to talk about another big game. All right. So 
the Los Angeles Sparks last night uh, played a, played their asses off. I mean, they played a great game. Finally, uh, picking up one of these big time victories they needed on the road. Of course, they've been on the three game losing streak after they won two games, and then before that, they had eight game losing streak. So. Wins, losses, wins, losses, up and down. And I'm going to watch my mouth right now and what I'm going to say because I just saw literally about like five minutes ago while I was on a commercial break, I saw that the Baltimore Orioles, who are in first place, just suspended and they're about to fire their broadcaster who's only like 29 years old and he's been uh, broadcasting play-by-play for the Baltimore Orioles television broadcast and they just suspended him for calling now his own team. It's 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 crazy that if your team uh, who's still in first place, no reason why you should fire or suspend your broadcaster. I mean, maybe take it down to the take it down to the field because the Baltimore Orioles are, I believe, on a Six game losing streak, but they're still in first place. But the broadcaster decided to take it to the airwaves and kind of like, hey, you know, the the Orioles are 0 and 6 in their last five, and they're this and that. And he kind of straight up called them out, stats and and whatnot. And Orioles didn't like that. They fired him technically, about to fire him, but he's technically suspended right now and inf- indefinitely until they actually give him his last check and he goes bye bye. Uh, but that was an interesting thing. So I really want to watch myself and what I'm gonna say. But I just know right now that this team that the Los Angeles Sparks are really not ready to really compete this season. Early in the season, they were like, okay, well, we're really not going to tank. We're really not going to go all the way. And uh, we're really going to try our best to do everything that we possibly can. And, you know, you got to give credits where credit is due. They maintain their focus and maintain their ability to stay on the court because at one point they had like seven players healthy out on the court. That's not a good sign. That goes more on the WNBA for not allowing the teams to expand their rosters especially when some players are are out due to illness or injuries. It is something that the WNBA commissioner needs to take care of and allow these teams to make certain moves. And you got to give some credit uh, to Coach Kurt Miller and keeping his troops together and trying to battle through. Trying to battle through. And congratulations to uh, head coach Kurt Miller as well for picking up his 150th win in WNBA coaching career. So that is a good sign for him. Um, But that kind of lets you know that he came into the season at 140. He now has picked up his 10th win yesterday in Washington, which was a very crucial win because they had two games straight in Washington. And they were trailing by like three with two minutes left. Thankfully, they were able to uh, complete the three-point play. NECA played amazing. Azure Stevens has been playing like, I mean, you Azure Stevens right now, I looked up her numbers. She has scored in double digits in like eight out of her last 10 games. And Neka Ogumike being the typical double-double machine she has been, she has gone score, uh, she has gone in single digits only one time this season in scoring. Single digits one time. That is impressive for Neka Ogumiki as she picked up 20 points, 10 rebounds, and six, um, no, and four assists yesterday uh, with the victory. And they do face on the uh, Indiana Dream tomorrow afternoon in Indiana. So make sure you tune in here at Infanity Studios. Of course, we'll have your LA Sparks weekly post game show that'll go ahead and tip off at around 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, so we'll be on right before the Profanity Nation. So make sure you guys stay tuned and watch that right afterwards. But um, yeah, it definitely catches on Saturday night. It's going to be Saturday night. It's going to be a crazy night in Los Angeles. So I just want to make sure I warn you guys right now. Stay off the roads. There's going to be hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people, uh, drunk people, out there because you got... Dodger game, big night, Saturday night at Dodger Stadium. You got a big game at the LA Sparks at Crypto.com. You got SoFi Stadium going to be rocking with the Chargers and the Rams. He's on fire! uh, The Kia Forum, you got Drake and Savage, 21 Savage taking over the Kia Forum. Then you got Metallica taking over like Hollywood Bowl. You got so many concerts and so many big games um, throughout Southern California. So those roads, those freeways, I mean, the 110 freeway is going to be nuts. Nuts at around 10 p.m. It's going to be nuts. So make sure everyone stay safe out there. Make sure you follow us here at Infanity Studios. Subscribe on Infanity TV. And I'll see you guys. I'll see you guys tonight at 4 o'clock. Stay tuned. Ali Sparks Weekly.